Hey, Spirit of 420 here. Just a quick preface to the episode you're about to see. The title of it, I forgot to tell you, is Spirit of 420 presents Junior Senior Cut Day as a Sophomore. Uh, I also wanted to add that I am doing this for myself, and I don't mean that in a stingy way. I believe that I have to do this. Uh, I believe I need to do this uh, because, like I say, and I've said before, I feel like you know this is something that God wants me to do. And uh, I feel like my story will affect people. Uh, but with that, you know, don't like, don't subscribe, don't share. I don't care. I'm still going to keep making these videos for myself and for God. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. Spirit of 420 here again. Uh, I'm Spirit of 420 because everything I do is so 420. Trying not to do that smack thing. So let's get right into it without smacking, shall we? Uh, simply put, the facts that I share on here are mine, as the intro says. I'm sorry, the facts that we sh that I share on here, as it says, uh, are 100% factual, and I can prove it. The opinions are mine, and you can't have them, but you're more than welcome to share. Um, wanted to get a little bit more into, and I'm going to, by the way, repeat that, because I do, uh, I am going to start releasing this on Spotify, uh, where they currently still don't have video, even though they say they do uh, go through Anchor. But it's not working, so or at least they haven't uh, seen where I haven't seen how I can put the video in there yet. But anyway, I will be on Spotify, so I'm going to start saying that, and I will start saying the outro that you see um, at the end of the show as well, just so that you you know it, right? And I don't do anything by the rules. I think I already said that. That's part of how I've been so successful at um, everything that I have done, and I've had a lot of trials and tribulations, but I've also had a lot of success. Uh, anyway, a little bit more about me. My father, uh, was extremely conservative and so was this whole side of the family and my mother wasn't. Uh, so I did love to, uh, I loved visiting my mom, obviously, you know, being that she was gay, she had a wife and all those other things that made it a lot more interesting in my opinion, uh, being with her, but I didn't live with her. Um, you know, even though my father and her split up when I was four, uh, I stayed with my father uh, up until I was 16 with one, regarding uh, with the absence of one year that I went to military school. And of course, uh, that's a whole nother story. Uh, but I'll skip that. I'll skip, you know, it, it segues into um, the reality of this story that I am telling today happened that last year. Uh, it was pretty much right at the end, too, because uh, if anybody knows Junior Senior Cut Day, that's the end of the year. And junior senior cut days also before prom. Prom's towards the end of the year. Um, nonetheless, so this is prom. I'm 15 years old. If I have the year right, I had not turned 16 yet. So this is 1988 uh, to be exact. And <laughs> just to get right into it, couple days before junior seniors cut junior senior cut day which if anybody doesn't know what that is that is the friday before prom uh you cut you take the day off and you party hard and then you go to prom the next day right at least that's what we've been doing it for as long as i've uh, been around and most people that i know do it that way too nonetheless i was a sophomore uh funny enough this is the year after my freshman year at military school like i said that's a whole nother story <coughs> but the reality is I had been kicked out. I was not living at home. Uh, I was living at a buddy of mine's house. Uh, and as a matter of fact, my dad had dated this woman, um, uh, his, his mother, uh, and I was friends with him and his sister. Uh, but his mother had, uh, you know, nonetheless dated my father um, years earlier. There's one nonetheless. Let's see if we can keep it to, to a minimum. So anyway, uh, back to the story. I was living with them. It was uh, the day before. This is actually that started. The whole story starts actually that Thursday night because uh, Mick, the guy I was living with, uh, funny enough, his original name, uh, and I won't go into last names. I'm not trying to do any of that. But his original name was Michael, and then he went by Mitch, and then he went by Mick. And that was where I got the idea, by the way, uh, just a few months later to go by Mick the, the dick. Again, another story, and we'll get to it. So anyway. Uh, back to living with them the night before he borrowed his he got his car I uh, got a car from his aunt his aunt had a brand new Celica GT 
badass vehicle had you know uh, i think it even had turbo but i know it had extra speed like you could do economic and all that stuff so you could get speed boost seems like it had turbo on it but i, I don't remember specifically it is years ago what i do remember though is uh, we were riding around that night and we jumped the railroad tracks that you're talking about a 40 mile hour turn immediately after the tracks you have to turn left uh, and it's got those old bob wire you know uh, old bob wire fences well, needless to say, uh, Mick hit it doing about 80, 85 miles an hour. We went into the air. You don't turn the car, car, you know, when you're in the air. And when he did hit, uh, we took a hard right and kind of drifted around the corner. But we drifted just taking out like four or five of those uh, posts with the with the barbed wire. And, of course, we thought our uh, we thought that was it. That was the end of the weekend. We immediately went to the car wash because there was mud all over it. Went to the car wash, washed the car, and unbelievably, there was no visible damage to the car other than a couple little scratches, but you really didn't notice them unless you were looking, and they were at the very bottom on the, you know, the run down there, on that vinyl run, and all the damage was underneath. So, amazingly, we got away with that, and it's now the next day, and we're throwing the keg party, and we can't find a place. It started out as a Roman keg party. If you don't know what that means, simply put, the keg was roaming all around. And, you know, where I'm from, that meant a lot of dirt roads uh, and a lot of uh, crappy places. By the way, if you can't see it, I'm always drinking out of my mug uh, that has a 420 handle for those that don't see it. And when you hear me, I'll be drinking out of that mug. And today I actually have my shirt on that says uh, plant-based diet. So I think that one's a pretty obvious for anybody who's watching. Nonetheless, we're throwing this Roman keg party. And as you remember, I think I've already mentioned, I wasn't necessarily the most liked kid. I was, in fact, I was picked on, and I was always trying to, you know, get the the coolest gang. Even though I hung out with them, it, it was an odd situation. I wasn't one of them, and I was always fighting for their approval. Uh, so I decided, had the brilliant idea to break in and, and uh, throw an epic party into my home while I wasn't living there, and I didn't have a key, so I had to break in. Uh, and my father and, and uh, stepmother were at work, so I knew I had it till about at least six o'clock. So we proceeded to drive about 15, 16 vehicles over to my house, and we had to break in, right? Uh, so, funny enough, I can't remember the dude's name. Forgive me for that, I am old. But, uh, a buddy of ours had broken ribs and he had his arm in this sling. And I knew that my sister's room stayed unlocked, the, the window. And it's on the second floor. Well, this was the only dude willing to climb up. And we gave him a boost up. He grabs hold. He gets on the second floor. And you literally had to jump. And he jumps from the second floor and hangs on to the window sill with this busted rib. Still has the sling on. I kid you not. The sling. I mean, he wasn't using it at that point, but he still has it around his neck. Gets into my sister's window, proceeds to open the door. Well, then, you know, it was truly, uh, I mean, it wasn't quite Project X for those who have seen that movie, but let's just say it was, there was no way I could hide what was happening, even though I desperately tried to. Um, we, had, we put the keg right on the kitchen linoleum floor, so a lot of you already know what happened there. Uh, I'll go into that in a minute if you don't. And we proceeded to have a huge party there for about... I think we got there, if I remember correctly, because before that we were, you know, we, we started this thing early. We had to be in school, so it starts around 6.30, the, the party. First started out on a lake, and then it roamed out on the street, uh, or to the dirt road, like I told you. So, uh, it was, we got there probably about 11 o'clock, uh, and we stayed there till about 4.30, and that's when I got everybody to get all the trash together and everything that they had done. Uh, for instance, somebody had opened up a brand new thing of apples in the pantry, or, excuse me, pickles in the pantry. I knew for a fact uh, that there was no way those were going to be hidden. I'd have to put them in the fridge, right? And I'm trying to hide this. So I just chucked them out into the woods on our property. Our property was heavily wooded, and there was a driveway up to the house. Just to give you an idea, it was a upper middle class house, if you will. So, you know, kind of back in the, in the like I say, in the woods. We had like five acres or something like that. Perfect place to pull this kind of party that I was trying to do. Nonetheless, that's number two, I think. It's time to shut the party down. Oh, by the way, I do need to mention this. This was the first time because we got there and we had all kinds of weed. I told you I was already peddling. 
and we did have weed and we had no way of smoking it uh, so this was the first time I experienced uh, boring out an apple and throwing a little bit of tin foil in there and having a great bowl with your apple and a man I tell you it tastes it tastes wonderful it's very very fruity uh, as you can imagine but anyway we clean up all the trash uh, we get up all the trash together and my buddy is holding the bag and the on the driver's side he's the one driving and he's holding it out the driver's side as he pulls away at an rx7 if you can imagine that because he didn't want the bag of garbage to get uh his home dirty or his car dirty but you know we had to get it out of there well this dumbass halfway down the main road which clearly was obvious he just dumps it on the side of the road i know because as i left i saw it and knew exactly i mean it was the exact bag i just filled so anyway as it turns out, my father ended up finding everything, even when he wasn't even trying to. Uh, junior, senior cut day ended up being a fabulous time. We ended up having even a uh, bigger party later that night. Took it to a, a buddy of mine's house out in the middle of the boons, and we stayed there till about 1 o'clock. I, of course, as I said, was a sophomore, so I did not go to the prom. I, wasn't, I didn't get a date. I wasn't the kind to get that kind of thing. And I, I didn't get nookie until I was almost uh, 18 years old. I think I told you I had a couple of girlfriends, but it never went more than some kisses and maybe a little oral play here never or there. So just to finish off the story, I ended up getting invited back home uh, only to literally uh, and, and I'll segue into another story that I'll tell, but only to literally leave uh, just after I turned 16 and left and moved my uncle for the summer. But when I moved back in, my father had a laundry list of everything that I had done, including the ring on the linoleum floor, uh, banana pills under his bed, uh, under his bed. So that means that probably most every single bed uh, within the home probably got used. Uh, I could only do so much to keep track of everything, and I did my best to do so. Uh, but obviously I didn't. And he randomly, while walking the property, and I mean, I chucked this thing. I, I ran all the way to the edge where the tree started and then chucked it way, way back in there. He even said, he's like, son, I, I can't believe I found this because I shouldn't have found this, quite frankly. But I did randomly because he was back there walking with the dogs or the dogs had gotten back there and he was uh, back there with one of them. I can't remember exactly the story, but nonetheless, he completely found it by accident. So it wasn't even, you know, something... Uh, that he was trying to do. Nonetheless, that was the end of it. And uh, yeah, like I say, I shortly there moved out. Moved out. So my one cool, uh, or excuse me, one strange thing that I'm going to share about myself today. I don't know if any of you folks have this. I mean, we all have the gritting of the teeth. Uh, I like to keep beat like I'm a drummer with my teeth during a song, you know, with it. And, and you probably can't hear that, but. Regardless, it's I find it to be quite humorous because I keep trying not to do it. My dentist and, and everybody told me, you know, and I have horrible teeth already, but uh, even the last dentist that I had, there's a clue that I haven't seen one in a while. Uh, even the last dentist I had said, yeah, you don't want to do that. You're going to wear your teeth down. You're going to wear down the enamel. And I desperately try not to, but it is one of my nervous tics. So I'm curious if anybody else shares that one. Uh, instead of uh, whatever the, the other thing I said, I think I said uh, live life as it happens or whatever, live in the moment. It still goes with this, but I'm really going to go with the theme of everything happens for a reason. Uh, the whole reason that I'm telling these stories and, and, you know, one of the, I mean, there's many, many facets to it, by the way. And if I told you all of them in one show, then that would be kind of boring because first of all, it'd be extremely long. And secondly, what would you come back for? Um, but one of the big reasons I am doing it is because of just how strange I am and all the different experiences. Every little thing that I've ever done has made me who I am today. And I, I am only that person because of all those. And I mean, every little detail of that. And of course, God, Allah, uh, all one and the same. That said, most people don't realize just how normal strange is. That's part of what I'm trying to bring to the table. And I think y'all know my closing. But if I haven't said it yet, other than just the once, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. And everybody else thinks that everybody stinks. Mine stink like fine brewed coffee. Oh, that is some really good stuff. That's a Colorado local blend. I'll tell you about it more some other time if I pitch them. And dank ass weed.
And that is all, folks. Until the next time. Thank you. Uh, just one last note I wanted to add to that. Um, you know, I didn't really bring it around uh, in the episode. But the reality is, what did I learn from that? I can tell you this. I did learn that, you know, seeking pre uh, friends and, and other people's approval, it was about that time that it actually stopped for me. Uh, because I had gone to great lengths, and even though we had the stellar, you know, epic, whatever kind of party you want to call it back then, these people still didn't really take to being my friends. And just a quick side note, and it's a whole other story for another day, uh, but, you know, I went back when I was 19 years old and visited them, and, and when I tell you where all of them were compared to what I had done in, in my short time, I think you'll, you'll see what I mean. So, with that said, thanks again for listening. Have a great day. I want to know my own.